Hello there, welcome to your latest 10 day trend. Now it has been a drier week, but it's also been a colder week. Both of those things are set to change as we head towards the weekend, particularly for southern areas. The reason it's been quite so cold this week is because we've had this northerly wind direction and quite a cold air mass over the UK. As low pressure has been centred over towards Scandinavia, and we've had higher pressure actually up towards the northwest. But you can notice by the time we get to Wednesday evening, we've got low pressure starting to break through that high pressure, and that's going to spread its influence throughout the weekend. But for Wednesday evening, we've got this feature that will skirt along the east coast, bringing some showery outbreaks of rain. And then that area of low pressure sinks to the south of the UK at first. But then as we head towards the weekend, it arrives to the south of the UK and will spread up north and eastwards through the course of Saturday and into Sunday. There is some uncertainty in the exact track of that low pressure. So that does mean there is some uncertainty on where exactly we will see the heaviest rain. But it is likely to turn milder and wetter from the south on the weekend. More on that in a moment, but for the time being, let's cover the rest of this week. So for Wednesday evening, we have this occlusion feature. Now that's gonna bring showery outbreaks of rain by Thursday to many eastern areas of the country in particular. We've still got cold air, so that does bring a risk of snow to the high ground, perhaps the Pennines and Scotland, and we could see some hail mixed in with that as well. Showery outbreaks rain most likely across eastern areas, but some western areas definitely couldn't rule out the risk, and there's just gonna be quite a bit more cloud around on Thursday compared to Wednesday in the west. That showery outbreak of rain should start to push away to the east through the course of Thursday and into Friday. So it'll likely be quite a clear and bright start to the day on Friday, but cloud will bubble up through the day and we'll see a few showers break out. Showers will be fewer and further in between than on Thursday. There could still be the odd heavier one, but I think particularly across central areas, it should stay largely dry. But notice in the south, we're starting to see things change. You can see skies turning that much cloudier. This is the starting influence of that low pressure starting to arrive into the south on Friday afternoon. So it brings the threat of cloudier skies and perhaps some showery outbreaks of rain to end the day. Now that band of rain will push northwards through Saturday and we will see further showery outbreaks of rain as the main area of low pressure arrives through Saturday afternoon. To the north of this area of low pressure though, we should be escaping much of the risk of that change to milder and wetter weather. Yes, there is a risk of showers developing across Northern Ireland and Scotland into the afternoon, but I think the risk is quite low and they will be fairly light. And actually through the morning, there will be plenty of sunshine, though it's still gonna be fairly cold here. As you can see, temperatures starting to rise in the milder air to the south, but that, that rain risk increasing through the afternoon. Now this area of low pressure will pivot and push northeastwards through Saturday night and into Sunday. And it's Sunday when it's likely to be uh, the bigger feature. So I think it's Sunday when we're most likely to see a wetter day across many areas of the UK. We see this main band of rain for many central areas, but actually once it does clear to the south and east of that, we could also see some thunderstorms breaking out as well. However, to the north and west of it, once again, for Northern Ireland and much of Scotland, we could escape the risk of that rain. It could be a fairly decent day. There could be a decent amount of sunshine and it's still not feeling too bad in the sunshine. But again, it could be a fairly chilly night and a cold start to the day. Now, as I said, there is some uncertainty in the track of that low pressure system. We'll be keeping you up to date with the details as we go through the rest of the week, particularly in our weekend forecast tomorrow. But let's have a look at where the greatest risk of seeing that rain is through Saturday and then through Sunday. So this is the ensemble forecast. So this is when we compare lots of different model runs, um, all slightly changed from one another, and we see the probability of the greatest risk of seeing um, rain. So this chart shows you the 24-hour rainfall accumulation, and that's of greater than 10 millimetres for the course of Saturday. Now, greater than 10 millimetres is enough to bring um, a significant amount of rain. And you can see the greatest chance of seeing that amount of rain where we've got the brighter yellows is across many southern areas of the UK, as far north as about um, southern Wales. But there's also a chance that that rain could push up into parts, much of Wales, into parts of northern England as well. And if that did do that, that would also bring the risk of thunderstorms on Saturday afternoon across the south coast. But you can see that there's a very low chance of seeing any of that rain across Northern Ireland and Scotland. So though you can't entirely rule it out, I think it's quite unlikely that you'll see any significant rain. It's probably going to be still a fairly fine day on Saturday across northwestern areas. Now on Sunday, as I said, that risk is much greater and much wider spread for that heavier rain. 
it's a larger swathe of the UK that are at risk of seeing some heavy rain. We've got a high probability that much of Wales, northern England and southern England as well, actually, will see that heavier rain. And it's in to the southeast of that low pressure where we see the th thunderstorm risk. Now, as I said, across north, the northwest, it's likely to stay dry. I think that's the most likely situation. But there is a greater chance, there's about a 10% probability that that rain could spread as far north as Scotland. So I think don't rule out a wetter day on Sunday, but I think your best chance is that it will be drier than at least further south and east. So it's turning a bit more unsettled as we head towards the weekend. Bit of a change, but it is turning milder. So as we finish the weekend, we've got that area of low pressure. Now, as we watch that area of low pressure, it sweeps up to the north and east of the UK. Then it starts to influence this pattern where we then, if you have a look, you can see we see another area of low pressure start to arrive from the north and west once again. So by Monday, we're back into a, a repeat situation of how we end the week. We've got this colder air mass moving in, so it still could be a colder start on Monday. Ahead of this area of low pressure, it'll probably be a fairly fine day, but we'll likely see this low pressure start to arrive into the south and west through Monday evening. Now, the difference between Monday and the end of this week is that once this low pressure develops to the southwest, it's expected to sort of anchor itself to the southwest of the UK. So the most likely pressure pattern for Tuesday and for the start of next week is this low pressure to be anchored to the southwest of the UK. We've got higher pressure to the north, so that's creating a bit of a more of a ridged pattern. But then we've got around this low pressure, a southerly wind direction starting to form. Now that can do a couple of things. It will introduce milder air, so temperatures will likely continue to rise to average, if not a little above average for the start of next week. But also could start to throw up a risk of heavy showers from the near continent as well. There's also the chance that this low pressure could be slightly more centered across the UK, at least to start the week. But we'll start to see this higher pressure move in from the north and guide that low pressure out of the way as the week progresses. So by Thursday, this is the most likely pressure pattern. That low pressure is still influencing southern areas, but to the north, we've definitely got the influence of that higher pressure, much the same as we've had through this week. So I think the best chance of any drier weather through next week is definitely still across northern areas of the UK. This low pressure still to the south will continue to bring a risk of some heavy pulses of rain at times. And that will continue to change as we head towards next weekend as well. So by the 4th of May, this is the most likely pressure pattern. That low pressure now well away to the south and east of the UK, and this higher pressure being more dominant. Now, it's not centred across the UK, but it does mean we will see drier weather by the end of the week. And this northeasterly wind direction, so not necessarily a particularly warm direction or a sunny direction once again, but definitely turning a bit drier and less unsettled than we will have started the week across the south. So an improvement as the week goes on. So the general pattern for the rainfall through next week is for us to see much of the rainfall falling across southern areas. Now this shows you the precipitation anomaly. So this is the anomaly from the average for this time of year. Where we see green colours, that's wetter than average, orangey colours, drier than average. So as you would expect with that low pressure anchored to the south, we'll see wetter than average weather to the south. So wetter across the south, drier across the far northwest, sort of somewhere around average in the middle. So I think as it has been this week, the further north and west you are, the more likely you are to see drier weather. Uh, but it will turn, the difference between this week and next week is it is looking that much milder. This is another good way to look at how we'll see that pressure pattern change through the week. This is the meridional trend. So that tells us how much of a change of uh, northerlies or southerly wind directions. So Blues on this map represent northerlies, reds represent southerlies, and greens and whites represent sort of somewhere in between, basically. So we started, or we're ending this week on northerlies, as we've had much of this week, um, and then we'll start to see that change through the next few days, through the weekend, and then by the beginning of next week, we've got those southerlies. You can see that quite strong signal for southerlies to start the week. 
Now, in earlier model runs, we had those southerlies perhaps lasting longer. You can see these are, as you go down the columns, down the rows, those are previous model runs. But in more recent model runs, we start to see the returns of those blues. So that change from the low pressure moving away to the near continent and that high pressure building in from the north is a new trend, but it's something that we're gaining confidence on. So we're quite likely to see that, that setup start to evolve through the week. So a bit of a change, a couple of changes through the middle part of next week, but it will slowly start to improve as the week goes on. And as I said, the temperatures will also slowly start to rise. These are the meteograms. We've got Reading on the top and Edinburgh on the bottom. This shows you the maximum and minimum temperatures. Red's the maximum, blue is the minimum. So cold at the moment, we're well below average, really. I'm sure everyone's been feeling it both in the north and the south. But the trend's quite similar for both um, Reading and and um, both Reading and Edinburgh. As we head towards the start of next week, when we start to see that southerly flow develop, temperatures really pick up um, to average and then above average. So we could see temperatures closer to 20 degrees uh, through at some, in some southern areas later on next week if we do see some of that sunshine. But I think temperatures just will be a bit more pleasant and definitely the nighttime temperatures will be escaping the risk of frost that we've had through this week. So that lasts until at least the middle of uh, the middle of next week. But then once we start to see that northerly wind direction, it could start to cool off a little bit towards the weekend. But there's nothing significantly cold in the forecast. So I think definitely the last of the significantly cold weather um, after the end of this week before it turns a bit milder into the weekend. So there's obviously a bit of detail still to play out for the weekend. Make sure you stay tuned for your updates and your full forecast. You can check out your full weekend forecast with me on YouTube tomorrow. But that's all for now. Bye-bye.